what's going on what's going on so i was this uh this lady wanted to know um why a pastor uh wouldn't marry her um and her fiance they both were divorced so i'll give you a backdrop they both were divorced um the wife um her divorce wasn't because of adultery um the the boyfriend divorce supposedly was because of adultery so um th we have to look in scriptures what god really says about that and just because you're divorced does not necessarily mean god is going to bless your next relationship so you got to be very careful when you decide to get into a relationship with the idea of getting married there's things that you have to do to make sure that you are you're cleansed and and God approves of that that marriage because listen if he gave you a wife and a husband the first time no matter how bad they were if he gave you a wife and a husband the first time why should he give you a husband and a wife now would have what growth have you done what what have you came to him to fix not only in yourself but also um, with repentance of because let's face it God hates divorce so it's a sin no matter how we look at it I don't care what your excuse is God hates divorce so since we got that out of the way let me give you scripture because I want to make sure that we're clear on the fact that just because you get a divorce does not give you a free reign uh, to, to ju just jump back into marriage according to what God says. Everyone who divorces his wife and marries another commits adultery. And he who marries a woman divorced from her husband commits adultery. Luke 16 verse 18. What does this mean? Do we, do God hate, do God hate divorcees? No. He hates divorce. So he doesn't hate divorcees. All right. So let's get that straight. We're, we're still children of God. So he doesn't hate us. He hates divorce. Divorce destroys everyone involved. You know, in my personal life, being divorced, I see where it's hurt my children. I can see the damage that is caused my children and that's why God hates divorce. He hates it because you 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 break a family apart that he put together. Because God listen, God puts people in your life for a reason. You know, he can make um he can turn a mess into a blessing no matter if you're believers or 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 believe or non-believers. God wants your marriage to work and he wants it he wants to be glorified in the midst of it. So that's why he hates divorce because a divorce does not glorify God. It shows his absence in that marriage. So he hates that his children makes make decisions without his approval and that's not in his will. Are there reasons that a person um, can get divorced? Sure, I mean, there's there's tons of reasons, but that doesn't make it right. Um, so in verse, so in verse, let's see here. Um, first of all, the divorce rate is high amongst Christians. We, can, we can't really, because it's not our place to judge the world but it's so high amongst Christians and we really uh, we really start ha have to put a flashlight on it. We have to start shining a light on that because that is not good that is so high amongst Christians who is supposed to be doing God's will and we're supposed to be making sure that we we love each other unconditionally, agape love. So here's the reasons um, for only for divorce. Matthew 19 verse, uh, actually Mark verse 10, uh, Mark 10 verse 12. And it's also in Matthew 19 verse, verse nine. And I say to you, whoever divorces his wife, except for sexual immor immorality and mates with another commits adultery, marries another, I'm sorry, marries another commits adultery. So, 
again, we can't because we fall out of love because, you know, we don't feel like it or because that person don't didn't come home last night or you're mad at that person or you fell in love with somebody else or somebody else got you, you know, somebody else has your attention. Those are not reasons for divorce. One reason for divorce is actually two reasons, but the one main reason for divorce is adultery. Now, God is not, God still hates divorce. So he's not saying that just because somebody cheated on you, you should go immediately get a divorce. No, you still should try because again, we're supposed to be spreading God's grace. I mean, the same grace and mercy that he has on us, we need to, we need to show it to each other. So where's the grace that he's given us because you've sinned against him, you've betrayed him and you've hurt him. So he wants to see his children working in his will and purpose. So that's why, you know, we have to be very careful with this divorce word. You know, people are so quick for divorces nowadays. And they fall out of love. What's what's falling out of love? How did you even fall into it? So we need to be very careful at, first of all, playing with the covenant of marriage. And just to be clear, marriage is between a man and a woman, one single man, one single woman for God's purpose. Nothing else in between or down below or around the corner or anything like that. Man cannot de de redefine marriage. I know, I know they've tried to redefine marriage. You know, I know government has wrote some things and have restructured uh, the word of God when it comes down to marriage. But listen, marriage between one man and man. All right. And so in Mark 10, verse nine, it says, Therefore, what God has joined together, let no one separate it, only by death. Romans, tw uh, Romans 7, 2, for a married woman is bond, bound to, by law to her husband while he lives. But if her husband dies, she is released from that law of marriage. So women are bound to their husband. So even if you get a divorce, and I need you to think about this. Even if you get a divorce, in God's eyes, you're still married. So that's why, that's why in Luke it says, if if a woman divorces, uh, if a if a, anyone divorces his wife and marries another, he causes her to commit adultery, and vice versa. If a if a woman divorces her husband and gets with another man, she causes him to commit adultery. So we're bringing these innocent people into our our lives and we're causing them to sin unknowingly. And so I remember when I remember when my wife decided she wanted to divorce. I fought it because my my heart belonged to to God and I was not going to okay a divorce. I fought, I asked for I wanted to do therapy, counseling. I fought to the last minute. I did everything. I've had a couple of pastors talk with both of us and try to get her to fight for the marriage. And she she simply said, God wanted her to divorce me. And that's like, God won't contradict yourself. And I remember having a friend of mine tell me that one day her husband watched um, a T.D. TD Jake sermon. And after he got done with that sermon, he said that, um, God spoke to him and told him to divorce her. That's a lie. That's a lie. And if you, and if any of you tell me God told you to divorce, to divorce somebody, you're listening to the wrong God. God gives us free will to make the choices and decisions that we need to make in order to, first of all, have discernment to not get in those type of relationships where you need to divorce and also the will to to either to will it out, because remember, he doesn't give us more than we can handle, to will it out, to trust him in the process, or if you decide you wanna bail, you just bail. I've heard so many different marriages, you know, 
10 years of hell, 11 years of wonderful marriage, a total of 21 years. Because marriage is not easy. So it's going to it's going to be rocky. And if you jump off of that that boat, what if the disciples jumped off that boat in Matthew when that storm? They wouldn't have never ever saw that Jesus Christ could calm the storms in their life if they just bailed out. So if you just bail out when your relationship and your marriage starts turning rocky and you don't trust in the same God that, that you married under, which is his covenant, marriage is very important to the Bible. Marriage is very important to, to God and Jesus Christ because he calls the church the bride and he's the bridegroom. That's powerful. And he talks about coming back for us. He talks about the love that he has for us. That's what marriage is supposed to be about. Not divorce. The divorce just destroys things. It takes people many, many years to get over a divorce. Some never recover. So before you marry again, or before you before you fill out those papers to divorce, pray about it. And when I say pray about it, earnestly pray and fast about it. Wait on God's answer. It could be a year, two years, five years, 10 years. But wait. You know, and, and I, I will hear, I'm sure I hear some people saying, but what if he abuses you? What if he mistreats you? What if he this? What if he that? What if he's lazy? What? If, but listen, Abigail was married to one of the meanest husbands out there. He was very mean king. And I'm not saying this will happen to your husband. I prayerfully not. I don't never want to see anybody go. But God caused him to have a heart attack. And she was free by the law. She was set free. And she was able to move on and marry. And she was able to get her life back together, you know, because she had faith in God. She served a good God. That can also happen to you in your marriage. So before divorce, think about these things. It's, it's so deep, you know, and, and, and you have to read it again. If a man divorces his wife and gets with another, he causes her to commit adultery. And if a woman divorces her husband, she causes the man to commit adultery. Is, is it really worth having a relationship that won't be blessed? Because God is not going to bless that relationship. It might look good for a while. It might look good on the outside for a while. It may be fun. It may be appealing to your flesh. But we shouldn't be living for the now. So understand this. And, and, and if you're a divorcee, let me tell you, if you're a divorcee, because I'm a divorcee and I'm here to tell you as a man that got that, that was divorced, although I didn't sign the papers, although I didn't push the divorce, I didn't even go to court because I wasn't going to have anything to do with a divorce, but there's still damage that I needed to make sure I was fixed and I was healed from before moving on. Divorce causes so much damage. Make sure you fix. Make sure you write before moving on. Don't just jump into another relationship because you're feeling lonely or or you 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 just need somebody there or you feel like it's the right thing to do. That's why we have so many different divorces because people get married for feelings. Don't get married for feelings. If you're divorced, if you divorce somebody, if you were the one that betrayed and broke the covenant of God, listen, there's there's help for you because God wants you to come to him in repentance and ask for forgiveness and apologize for trespassing against him. Ask him to make sure he cleans you, make sure that he 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 gives you wisdom and discernment so you don't make that mistake again. He wants to hear from you, but don't just get a divorce, get with somebody else and just don't think that there's consequences. There's consequences from all our sins. And yes, getting a divorce is a sin. You know, we're commanded to forgive and love each other. Getting a divorce is not forgiving and loving someone. 
And again, I'm not saying that there isn't situations where divorce needs to happen. All I'm saying is God hates divorce and that you need to make sure you're doing everything possible to glorify God in that marriage. Not be somebody's doormat, not be somebody's footstool, but making sure you're glorifying God in that marriage. You have a good one.